So good evening and welcome to another talk. Um, tonight I'm going to go through a detailed description on the fall, how we fell asleep, how the whole thing came about. Now, very often in course communities, whenever the question is asked, you know, how come we fell asleep? Why did God allow us to do this? The answer is often given um, following Ken's original answer when it when Ken was asked. And that is, why are you asking the question? You keep falling asleep with every second. You make a decision for wrong-mindedness, and that's fair enough. But bearing in mind that a lot of course students do follow the path of Gyani or the path of the intellect. So there's always going to be that question, why would this happen? Why would we do this to ourselves? Or why would God let this happen? And until those questions are subsided in the light of, of understanding that then transcends into knowing, the ego keeps using that, that train of thought to pull us into questions and keep us um, trapped in, in searching. And what I've noticed with Course in Miracles communities is often students have been studying the course for 20, 30, 40 years and still haven't gotten over the separation idea and the idea of scarcity and the idea of past, present, and future, all illusionary constructs of a dreaming mind. So I want to share with you tonight, in as simple terms as possible, of course, it's almost like storytelling, how this came about, how we find ourselves here projected and localized as thought and form, believing that we have separate identities. That's what ego is. Ego is simply a belief in separate identity without any awareness of our true essential self. Characters in a dream unaware of what dreams and that what dreams is actually that which projects us into temporal, ethereal thoughts in form. Um, and then, of course, comes the whole question of enlightenment or awakening. And some people like to say awakening and others like to say enlightenment. But yet they're still referring to body minds awakening or body minds becoming enlightened. And no such thing as a body mind, a body can become enlightened. It, it dies to little self, awakens to true self. And what is happening is the collective mind is becoming lit, enlightened by the light of its truth, the light of its true self. And, and that, of course, then also brings the question, then where is Jesus? Um, and, you know, did Jesus actually give us the course or have we mistaken the voice for God? as the voice the voice of Jesus. And, and I want to get rid of all of those misunderstandings and, and bring clarity to the community. So I'm truly hoping that this, this video will be spread wide. Let me share a screen with you and take you through a story. So it's PowerPoint presentation, quite simple. And I think it will explain quite clearly um, what really never happened. So imagine if you will, this huge ball of light forever expanding. Now it's impossible to imagine eternity, but just imagine light pouring from center outwards forever. And light is love. Light is truth. Is God light? It's an analogy. We assume so because God is the light with which we see. And so God is ever expanding eternally. It's just pure light, ever extending, ever expanding. Pure love, ever extending, ever expanding. Before time came into existence and way after time has ended, which it already has. We're just playing, we're sitting at the end of the movie, watching it on recall. The whole thing's over. And we're trying to fix our lives and transcend illusions. And it's already over. What we should be doing is realizing self and realizing it's over. The minute you realize self, you realize it's over. And then you don't pay any more attention to activity in the dream. 
So imagine this ball, and this is a picture of a polystyrene ball, so it's made up of billions of little beads, and, and there's a reason for that. So true reality, absolute reality, God, capital M mind, God is eternally expanding. God is pure spirit, pure energy. The word spirit only came into human vocabulary roughly two, two and a half thousand years ago. Why? Because you can't explain energy. We only understood energy a couple of hundred years ago. God's essence, the very core essence of what God is, is made of infinite energy, light cells, ever extending. And each light cell is a son of God ever extending just imagine billions of light cells ever extending each cell is a sun or a self capital s and each cell each sun is identical to every other cell or sun or cell and each one is created from the self same essence as its creator pure light pure love ever extending simple that's what god is forever and nothing exists outside that. There is nothing but that. That's all there is. God is all there is. Love is all there is. Now imagine, if you will, that this ball of light, which is ever extending, is made of a billions of light cells. And each light cell we call a son of God or a self. And each light cell is a thought of love in God's mind eternally extending, eternally expanding. Infinite, not billions, infinite, infinite number. It's impossible to think of infinity. Infinite number of light cells extending the, the light, the love, which is God. And one light cell, one light cell falls asleep. That's it. That's the story of this universe. And dreams a dream of darkness. Dreamt the dream of darkness. Dreamt, past tense, done, okay? A dream of darkness, a dream of separation. Now, this light cell, this, this, this ball of light, God, every cell therein is the sonship. That is the kingdom in which God abides. God abides in the light which he extends. And the light which he extends are thoughts or spirit or sons of God ever extending. One falls asleep. Now, it doesn't get separated from God. It can't leave God. It's still in God. And it's expanding as God too. Hence, the universe is still expanding. Why? Because the dreamer's mind is still expanded. expanding. Why? Because the dreamer is expanding in God, even though he's asleep. Nothing's changed. If you fall asleep on an airplane, you don't wake up midair somewhere without an airplane. You travel with the airplane, whether you're asleep or not. You're part of that which is expanding. You're part of that which is movement. Wuchi, as it's called. So, in this tiny little circle, one sun, you and I, all of us are characters in that dreaming mind. The entire universe exists in one son of God's dreaming mind. And he's fractured in that mind. He's fractured himself into nine subtilian beings. Where do I get that number from? Three and a half thousand life between life regressions, where every single person sitting on my couch remembers and said nine subtilian. I had to look it up the first time. So some spirit beings, thought forms, have projected them into physicality. And this is what I'm going to explain. And it's all happening in one singular cell. It's not happening outside God. There's nothing outside God. The, back, the black background on the slide, the slide doesn't exist. There's just pure light, ever extending. I've used a circle just to explain it in, in, in a way that is easily understood. Now we're going to zoom in on that circle. We're not so slide back. There's that circle. We're now going to zoom into that little circle and see what's actually happening in the activity. So the Son of God's fallen asleep in God and is dreaming of nothing, pure darkness. Why? Because what's the opposite of everything? Nothing. And so if everything is light, nothing is the absence of light, darkness. One cell, one self, one sun, one little mind falls asleep and that thought is nothing but a tiny mad idea he asks an unanswerable question an innocent question what would it be like if it wasn't always bliss now the course says the world was made in vengeance there's no world yet 
He didn't fall asleep and go immediately into vengeance, and he didn't fall asleep because of vengeance. He fell asleep like any innocent child does because he simply asked why, or what would it be if it wasn't always bliss? And what would be the opposite of what's eternally bliss, God? Nothing, pure darkness. He falls asleep. He dreams of no thing because everything is light, and so nothing is the absence of light. He dreams of a void. He dreams of nothing. He falls asleep in God. Dreams of nothing. One of gazillions and gazillions of light cells. One's asleep. One tiny little dream. Now what exists in God? Pure light. The sons of pure light. All equal to themselves. In God there's no angels. There's no unicorns. There's no fairies. There's no nothing. There's just light. There's no beings in God. It's God isn't a being. It's pure energy, pure light, ever extending. So simple. This is completely aligned with quantum, quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Okay. Inside that mind, light enters the dream and expands. Big boom. The universe, big bang. The universe is created. Inside the son of God's dreaming mind is an entire universe of space, time, and matter. When the sun falls asleep, he's lost. A part of himself remembers it, can't forget what he is. He's just temporarily fallen asleep. Just like when you at night, you go to sleep. When you fall asleep, you, forgive, you forget about your individuality. But as soon as you wake up, you're back to being you. So there's a part of you doesn't forget what you are. You don't wake up every morning and then have to come up with a name and a profession and and try and rethink as to, you know, what were you doing yesterday and what should you do today? So the light has come into the dream. What is the light? And the way we say the light is the voice for God, the memory of God. Spirit has come back into the dream, calling us all to return. The sun's dreaming of a universe, darkness interspersed with light. The whole physical universe exists in the mind of God's dreaming sun. The whole thing is in one dreaming mind. And more importantly, in part of the dreaming mind, because the other part of the mind is fully awake, hasn't fallen asleep. We and the entire universe are created from the self, same essence energy as God. What would it be created from? Even though it is projection, what's projecting it? Light's projecting it. What are we projecting? Light. But it appears through the filters of our forgetfulness as people, places, things, and events, objects, celestial objects throughout time. We just cannot remember what's actually projecting. None of us can remember being born. None of us in the spirit world actually remember coming into existence. The important thing to remember is the light has come. God is the light with which you see. Right now, you're watching this. You're listening to me. If you are blind, you can hear me. But you have eyesight. You can see this. The reason you can see it on the screen is because God is the light with which you see. Your eyes don't actually see. Your eyes actually project. And guess what? That means we're all projecting this screen right now. Whatever you're seeing on this presentation right now, whether you're watching it live or on YouTube later on, it's all here now, present. And so what's in my mind appears on the screen in your mind too. And therefore appears to be on a screen in front of you. The whole thing, we're sharing one mind. Only minds can join. And so in the universe, there's a little star, one tiny little gazillions of stars, and there's a solar system, and there's our little planet Earth. So what does he dream? He, and this universe is still extending. Many people speak of multiverses. We haven't even reached the end of this universe. We have no idea where this universe starts and ends. We're talking multiverses. There's no such thing. One universe, one dreaming mind. They'd love to make up nonsense and make up movies, parallel universes. Why? Because they wish that the, another part of themselves is there to having a better life than they currently are. That's what people, that's why they dream of parallel universes, because they hope there's a version of themselves that's richer, famer, more famous, healthier, better looking, and better off than they are. That's what they're really hoping for, because they don't want to face the unreality and indignation of having dreamt a dream of separation. So yeah, we are on this tiny little planet. Can you imagine how tiny this little thing is? And yet it's actually relevant how tiny or how large, because it's projection of self. And so 2,000 years ago, there's a dude with long hair called Jesus. So we think he had long hair. We don't know. 
Because the pictures that we see of a guy called Jesus today is a picture of a Roman soldier. In actual fact, that's that soldier was a rapist. That pretty boy with blue eyes and long blonde hair was Roman, Italian. Okay, and the, the Jesus picture we see today, no one knows what Jesus looked like. Not a single person knows. The first pictures of Jesus were in the 1300s. And so the difference between a Jesus and the loose standing on the screen is, is just 2,000 years. Both realizing our one indivisible self, appearing in space-time. It's all happening right now. If time doesn't exist, that means every single character throughout history is existing right here, right now. And since they are all projections of one dreaming mind, every single one of us is one indivisible self. Every single one of us is one indivisible self. Therefore, what I learn is then accessible. What I remember is therefore accessible to all minds. What Jesus remembered of self is now accessible to my mind and your mind. That's why Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, every everyone that's existed throughout time and has awoken to self is that which is awoken to self within ourselves, not outside ourselves, not holding our hand, not walking us home, because there is no home to walk to. We've never left. We're still in the kingdom. But we get trapped with these silly stories, and therefore that's why we don't transcend. If you read the course properly, once the transcendence process begins and ends there and then, no more searching needed, because you realize you are that which dreams. You are that which projects into form. And so the whole universe, the whole universe, as I've said before, exists in, and, and universe, pure consciousness or awareness, pure consciousness is awareness. It's infinite, eternal mind, infinite mind of God. We, the collective, okay, exist in one tiny little, one circle, one sun. We create it from the self-same essence, spirit, energy is God. So who do we pray to when we pray? Who do we talk to? Who's communicating with every single fracture inside that little circle? It's all God. What's the difference between us and Jesus? Purely illusionary space-time. I and my Father are one. What I can do, you can do greater things than I've done, you shall do. This is what he taught us. And until you accept it fully, you will remain trapped in duality. And then try and shoehorn duality and Christian mysticism and all sorts of other nonsense bullshit into the course. Course in Miracles, at first I thought, I thought it was Christian mysticism. It's not. It's the furthest removed concept from Christianity completely. Yes, it may still use Christian Judaic terminology, but it's got nothing to do with Christianity. There is nothing to be saved. No one died for your sins no, there is no hell, there, there is no afterlife, life is a continuum, and life is God, and we are extensions of God, we are the extension of God, temporarily falling asleep, temporarily fra fractured into nine septillion beings, yet we are one indivisible self, the essence of all of us is pure spirit, the essence of every single one of us is the self-same essence as God, we're made from that, the appearance, the body-mind appearance is the illusion, so simple it's so simple okay i'm going to stop there and 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 do some questions before i continue okay in part two i'm i'm going to take us through the explanation of ken's diagram now i found that to be very useful the way the first time i saw it um, and I want to take a step by step on how the separation replaced the awareness of self in our mind, in our Christ mind, in our Son of God mind, in our right mind. And so I'm going to expand on, on Ken's diagram, just that I'm adding color for effect. So ultimately, this just is like the big circle of light, God. Source energy, pure awareness, pure light, pure love, pure peace. This is eternity, forever extending. This is God's mind, pure light. God is eternally extending that which is God. The extension of God is love. 
Love is God, God is love. We've heard that everywhere. It's in, in front of all churches and all cathedrals. Love is God's sonship, which shares God's essential nature, shares God's energy, shares the love of God. In actual fact, we are the love of God ever extending. God is the cause. The sonship is the effect. God is the core light, source of light. The effect is eternal light, ever extending. So we've got that ball that has fallen asleep, the son of God's mind, asleep now. He dreams of nothing. He dreams of darkness. No awareness of who or what he is. He then calls. He hears the voice. He calls for help. And God responds, return to me. God's voice is heard. God's voice, the memory, which contains the essence energy of what we are, of what God is. That's what the Holy Spirit is, the holy memory of our eternal absolute reality. And so the minute the Holy Spirit comes into the dream, the son now has a choice. Do I listen to the voice of fear, the, the voice that fell asleep, or do I listen to the voice of love? Do I listen to the wrong mind? Do I listen to the right mind? He has a choice now, or what appears to be a choice. Because in truth, there's no choice, because you've never really left the kingdom. And so if we look at Ken's diagram, and so we're just going to look at the left-hand side of the diagram now. On the right-hand side are just pure explanations. So the top part is, this top part, if you look at the arrow, is God's mind. It's the outer circle. From that first line, we now move into the circle, the dark circle. And so the mind falls asleep, the dreaming mind. It dreams of a tiny mad idea. It dreams of separation the son believes he was abandoned he believes he was rejected he believes he was unworthy and he becomes fearful that he's going to be punished because he imagines something created him like he makes manifest objects celestial objects in the universe there's no human beings yet this is now just the creation the formation of early universe just energy extending solar systems being created Celestial bodies. It's at that stage where the sun realizes he is energy. He's got the power to make manifest. And so he fractures himself into nine septillion beings. Why nine septillion? There's a mathematical equation which I can take you through that explains that. For now, just imagine gazillions of beings. Fractured parts of one dreaming mind. This is the spirit world. The world of thought forms. It's an ethereal world where the sun imagines what he could be. Billions of ways of imagining him. Every imagined thought is a thought form, a spirit being. A spirit being is simply an imagined idea of what the sun could be, embedded with sin, fear, and guilt which plays out in myriads of different ways. We call those skills and talents. And yet within every single separate self is the memory for God hidden in the subconscious. And from this ethereal world of thought form, as he's making manifest celestial objects through space-time, he starts to play with life forms. And from that, ethereal thought form world spirit world he then projects physicality onto the screen called the universe ego gets projected and 16 billion years later yeah we are physical sentient beings sentient body minds characters in a dreaming mind none of us have a mind we're simply like radio receivers receiving a permanently broadcasted message of sin, fear, and guilt, separation, fear, perception from one dreaming mind. We think we have our own minds. We think we have free will. We simply have a receiver, a brain, a receiver of messages being sent either from the wrong mind or the right mind. We have a choice. The only choice we have is which channel we put it onto. And so from this thought form world, spirit world, we project our thought, the thought forms project into thoughts in physical form, body, mind, sentient beings. 
and the mind becomes split as it projects into fear. The subconscious secret guilt of uh, dream of fear, sin, and guilt is now hidden. We project it into form. But within every single character is the idea of abandonment, rejection, unworthiness, fear of being punished, fear of feeling guilty, guilt itself. And yet all of that is in one dreaming mind projected through 8 billion on this planet at the moment. And they play two different, two very specific roles. And in each one, there's a split mind of the split mind. The ego is then split into further two, into wrong-minded ego, wrong-minded ego, and right-minded ego. Not to be confused between the right mind and the wrong mind. In wrong mind, ego is split into two. Wrong-minded ego, right-minded ego, or good ego, bad ego, if you want to call it that way. And the wrong-minded ego is unhappy and nasty and stingy and unkind and rigid, criminal, negative, argumentative, the victim, a total victim, and lives on pure instinct. And then there's the good or the right-minded ego, and he's happy and funny and charitable and kind, humanitarian, flexible, amicable, empathetic, powerful, intellectual, uh, wonderful. And these two seem to clash within every single character. And we want to be the good, the hero, the right-minded ego in the dream. This is pure projection. This is reincarnation. Reincarnation is projection. And we project into form in order to realize what we are through the experience of what we know. But fear has entered the dream. At the first stage of separation, it was purely innocent. It's as soon as fear entered the dream that the ego then projected physicality, projected sentient being. While the universe was being man, man, made manifest, the fear hadn't entered yet. It's only when he projected, only when the, the fractured parts of the sun's dreaming mind projected into the physical form that fear entered the dreaming mind. Only at the, at the veil of forgetfulness. That second line. So the secret dream is hidden in the subconscious mind. Sin, fear, guilt, which then projected as in its sensations, feelings, thoughts, emotions of unworthiness, being rejected, not good enough, and therefore having done something bad and we're going to be punished and therefore fear enters. And so every single thought form has this imbued in self. And thus when it projects into form, its qualities of separation are projected into physical form. And yet in spirit thought form and in thought in form, physical body minds, is the memory, the essence energy of what we are. Now, some Course in Students, Course in Miracles say, but spirit can't project into the dream. The whole thing, the entire universe is happening in spirit. It's not like spirits go, it's not a dream outside the mind. It's outside the clarity and the awareness of mind but it's still in the dreaming mind the universe is not outside god or the son of god's mind because that would mean it would be then outside god of course students are confusing the shit out of this it's so simple when you dream at night the characters that you dream of are in your mind you don't wake up in the morning they're standing next to you they can't leave your dream characters in your dreaming mind at night can't awaken and then you wake up in the morning standing next to you. All the characters in your dreaming mind awaken as you awaken in the morning when the light has come. Sophia has entered this dream. And yet one of us figured it out 2,000 years ago. One of us that we know could have been someone else before him. But we're aware of him. He's the one that's come into our awareness. Yeshua ben Joseph. Christ Jesus. Awoke to self. So now we're going to look at what happens on the right-minded side. Okay. So God calls his son to awaken. Holy Spirit, the voice for God, the memory of God, enters the mind. The mind fractures and splits and creates the universe. The dreamer splits himself into nine septillion beings. Within each fractured thought form or thought in form is the memory, the essence, energy, spirit of the spirit we all are. So each one of us contains Wrong-mindedness and right-mindedness simply are waking, waiting to be called upon. For which one do you answer to? 
the awakened mind or Christ mind, right mind, the Holy Son of God, aware he is the Holy Son of God. And it's not a he or a she, so don't get into that debate. It's just pure energy, pure spirit. No sex organs. Okay, so from within each fractured self, the light, the Holy Spirit calls each one of us to awaken. And this is the at one mint. Non-duality, complete non-duality. Holy Spirit, we are pure spirit. God is spirit. God is holy. It's the extension of God is spirit and therefore holy too. We are all holy spirit. The awakened self, one Christ. It's the I amness. It's the recognition of our shared essence, of our true essential nature. Conscious awareness while we are dream. Once the dream is over, just pure awareness and filled, filled with Holy Spirit. Each fractured self starts to awaken. Jesus demonstrated atonement through the resurrection of the body and the ascension of the mind and proved that bodies do not exist and sin, guilt, and fear is not real. And God is the only reality. The, ec the universe and body minds, that which appears, is an echo of guilt in our dreaming mind, in the Son of God's dreaming mind. Forgiveness is the, is the only way to end the dream and realize our true self, our Christ self. So when we look at the right side of the diagram, while we're still in the world, while we're still in physical form, in other words, below that white line, what happens is we start a shift and the personality doesn't just dissolve and you just become this numb nuts robot, okay, just smiling all the time, face glowing with the joy of enlightenment. The character's still there. And if you're a bit of a grumpy git, then you're still a, a bit of a grumpy git. You just smile while you growl. But the grumpiness is, is going to dissolve. You're not going to be able to stay angry. Why? Because the, what made you angry, you can't take seriously anymore. And so what was once upon a time, someone, an unhealed healer, searching for ways and techniques and processes of awakening the self and a myriad of spiritual disciplines, now becomes simply awakened to our essential nature, the healed healer. As according to the course, the teacher for God, not a title you bestow upon yourself. That's something that you'll, that people that listen to what you have to say or follow what you have to say, they'll call you teacher. You don't call yourself a teacher. That's just egoic labeling again. This is unconditional love in action. This is the awake dreamer in form. This is the self realizing little self doesn't exist. And within this self is the true self, aware of a my essential nature, aware of the all-pervading presence in which we abide, God. The recognition I am, God's Holy Son. The light of awareness, I'm aware all of it's me. There's no more projection, there's no more blame. There's a little bit of laughter at the idiosyncrasies and the, and the absurdness of the storytelling that goes on amongst non-dual communities, but it's just funny. You just realize, okay, they're so far down the rabbit hole. You know, even bunnies are scared to go there. There's no more attachment to the projection. You're dispassionate about the world you see. You're, yet you realize all of it's in your dreaming mind. And so you love all of it. You're grateful for all of it. And you give gratitude for all of it. And you appreciate all of it. And you smile at all of it. And sometimes you laugh at its absurdity. And some people are going to think you're shaming them. But it's just laughing because it's just laughter. You're laughing at all your fractured selves. Because you're not going to do it in a hard, horrible way. You're not going to demean people and laugh at them and make them feel bad to their faces. But you laugh at the whole damn thing. You laugh at the absurdity of what people call spiritual and mystical and esoteric. The whole thing is just funny. It's all so simple. It's all just light. It's all so beautiful. It's all just pure love. It's unconditional. And it you don't feel it. It just pours through you. There's no feeling. There's no sensation. There's no emotion. It's just pure joy. And joy is not an emotion. It's a state of awareness where you realize all is as it's meant to be. Love is as it's meant to be. And this is over. I'm just watching a movie that I think is rather silly. Like slapstick. It's like, it's just silly. The whole thing is just ridiculous. So the physical world is in effect. But what happens when we realize self, the, the world, as horrible as it may have seemed, in the past, when you were trapped in illusion and trapped in separation, it just becomes beautiful. 
and you're not drawn to the ugliness in it and you're not getting into conflict with people and you're not arguing and enforcing your way. You're going to speak when you're going to speak and when you read or hear something that you disagree with, you just simply smile and do nothing. You don't have to change it. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to correct people. You don't have to quote the course to justify yourself. If you have to quote the course to explain something, then you know not what you are and you're trapped in dogma. If you can't explain absolute reality to a five-year-old child in the simplest way, and you need to use and quote the course and put the quote and the quote and the course said and the Jesus said, you lost. You're trapped in intellectual mumbo jumbo bullshit. If you can't explain it simply, I mean, just imagine, explain ice cream to a child. Why would you want to? Just go and then give it to them and watch what that child does. The only way one can truly transcend understanding into knowing is through direct experience. No one can explain what God is. No one can explain what self is. The minute you open your mouth, you're in concession. And as I've said before, Zen master once said, if I open my mouth, I tell a lie. But if I keep quiet, I'm a coward. And so I share. Why do I share this? I don't have a club. I don't have a group. You can't pay me money. This is for free. As I've said, a true teacher is, some, is someone that you call teacher, someone that reflects a place of price back at you, someone that charges you to teach you what you already know and seem to have forgotten. That's not a teacher. That's a seeker, seeking through charging you. They teach what they most want to learn. True teachers share for free and don't call themselves teachers. I'm nobody's teacher. I am. Full stop. No more attached. But you can't detach from any of it. Recognize all of it is in your dreaming mind. All of it. And so you have to love all of it. Why? Not as objects, people, places, things, and events, but the essence of what all of it is. Because all of it exists in one dreaming mind. And that dreaming mind is awakening. And that mind is in God. And God is love. And so therefore, all of it's love. All of it's love. And what is evil in the world? It's simply the absence of the awareness of the love we are. And it's all of it's crying for love, crying. Even the worst criminal has been abused in some way and is crying to be loved. And the only way they know how is to go out and harm others in order to get their power back. But what they really want is to be loved. Everybody wants to love. A spider wants to live. An insect wants to live. All of it wants to live. All of it. Because the essence of all of it is love. And what do we do? Rank order. We decide what's right and wrong. And we give ourselves all sorts of justifications why it's okay to slaughter animals and eat them. And we even do it for sport. Now, let's go back to this very, very important slide. This is Ken's slide. Okay, so you can see it. I've just added a little bit to it. On the left-hand side is pure ego. This is the humans in this world. Trapped in wrong-minded ego, right-minded ego, projection, reincarnation, veil of forgetfulness, no memory of the spirit world unless they go do a regression and even then that just glimpses, just glimpses. You can go and do the best past life regression, you're going to get glimpses and after a while it starts to fade just like memories fade. But when you answer the call, when the sun, the decision maker, the blue circle that Ken speaks about, chooses right-minded, like I say, the, the personality starts to dissolve. The awakening starts to come through. It's the healed healer. It's love in action. It's inspired action. There's no purpose behind the action other than to be thyself knowingly, serve thyself joyously, keep reminding yourself, I am. And I am brings the light of awareness to the rest of my fractured selves through this. I, I'm not doing the work. Just like I don't think anything. I've never thought a single thought. I've never felt a single sensation. I've never had a single experience. I'm experienced through. The dream is experiencing himself, what he is, through the experience of what he's not, through this projection of himself, eight billion projections of himself in this world. That's why none of us really can change anything because we're playing a script that the dreamer dreamt of. But what we can do, since the Holy Spirit is within each one of us, the very life force of what's allowed the dreamer to project a dream, the very essence of what's allowed the dreamer to dream, 
his Holy Spirit, memory of God, our true essence. And so we do have one thing that the ego cannot prevent us from doing. Why? Because the ego has no idea it exists. Ego cannot know spirit, and spirit doesn't pay any attention to ego. And what is it that we can do? We can choose again, Holy Son of God. Choose right-mindedness. Choose forgiveness. Choose to see your brother as yourself. Choose to realize that everything you look upon is made from the self-same essence as our self, which is made from the self-same essence as God's self. One shared indivisible self. In the Hindu um, Vedanta traditions, they speak of, of the Jiva, of the Atman, and of Brahma, ab the absolute reality. In Course in Miracles, non-duality, it's the ego, it's the Christ mind, it's God. It's the same thing. Non-duality explained in many different schools. As the Course says, this Course is not an end, it's just the beginning. There's many paths to the same awareness. We're awakening into awareness. On the left side of the screen, pure consciousness. And yes, we start to become consciously aware. But the minute we move into right-mindedness, we move into awareness of awareness. And there seems to be ebbs and flows. It seems to come and go. And as we spiral up in awareness, and then we, we go through the development of trust, and people say to me, how do I get out of the fifth stage of the development of trust? It's called the development of trust for a reason. Because it's calling you to trust completely in God. And to stop talking about the past. And when fear thoughts and emotions rise up, step out of the battlefield, Holy Son of God, go immediately into silent stillness, offer gratitude, no attention to thought, no attention <clears throat> to sensations. Give no attention to feelings, emotions, sensations, thoughts. Step into silent stillness, abide in stillness, give gratitude. Become aware of the ever, ever present, presence, all pervading presence in which we abide because all of this is happening in God's mind. Our dream is happening in our mind, but our dream isn't real. What's real is our awake self and our awake self is in God's mind. You've never left. Now, below the white line is the physical world. Above the white line is what's called the spirit world. So when we transcend into right-mindedness, what happens to the body-mind once we leave this world? Do characters accumulate up top here, waiting for the rest of their fractured selves to awaken? Is there a Jesus and a Buddha in the right mind as characters talking to the wrong mind? Or is Jesus the character body is dissolved in the dream? And what's now returned is the essence of what was Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, a return to the right mind, to the Holy Spirit, to the awakened self and one Christ. So who's actually talking to the decision maker, to the son? If it's not ego, it's right-mindedness. Is there a Jesus still talking to you? Or is it your mind talking to you? Helen had these episodes. Episodes where she would just blank out, go into a daze. Eyes would change color, roll back. And she recognized that that's, at that moment, the voice that she was hearing was our shared voice, her voice too, our shared collective Christ voice. When she stepped out of the way and no longer needed a picture, an image, an idol in order to hold a hand to help her transcend. She no longer needed a Jesus. She realized it's one indivisible voice for God in all of us. Right-minded voice. So once we've transcended from wrong-minded or right-minded ego into the healed healer, as our personality starts to dissolve, an echo of the old personality, as the light starts to shine through, as the joy starts to light, shine, shine through, and we eventually put this body down, what happens to our essence? It returns not to the spirit world. It returns back to the, back to the right mind. That's why when I died and went to the spirit world, and I was physically dead for, for four hours in this world, and it felt like I was away for 20 years in the spirit world, I couldn't find a Jesus. Why? Because Jesus has dissolved. Jesus is now simply an echo, a memory in the wrong mind on how we should be while we appear in form. The essence that talks to us as if it's Jesus or a Buddha, depending what school you come from, or a Krishna or a Ramana or whatever, is the self, 
self-same voice of the right mind, the holy voice, the Holy Spirit voice for God. And at some stage, you need to put down that image and recognize self and self is one indivisible self. And when that indivisible self recognizes itself, the character dissolves. And when you finally put this body down, the essence of your spirit returns to spirit, to the Holy Spirit, to the Christ mind. And that, and when all of us have been accumulated in the right mind, the dream ends and the extension of God continues. What did Jesus teach us? I'm going to talk about Jesus now because this is the one person we follow as a teacher. Why? Because the echo is still in our mind. Why is it still in our mind? Because it's still in our right-minded memory of what is true. A subconscious dream, dreaming or wrong mind, is filled with guilt, the secret dream, appearing as a spirit world to those of us that pass and haven't transcended duality. And thus it projects attack thoughts into an imaginary world, Earth. The secret subconscious guilt and attack thoughts can only dissolve in the light of silent self-awareness through forgiveness. But they have to dissolve before you can abide. You can't abide in awareness while you have unforgiven. You'll only last a few minutes, half an hour at best. Forgiveness leads to understanding, which leads to true realization. What realizes? The self realizes itself. True realization of the dreaming mind which leads to gratitude for God's grace because God will never abandon us. Why? Because we're made from God. He can't abandon, abandon a part of himself because God is holy. God is spirit. And therefore, what are we? Extensions of Holy Spirit. Therefore, all of us contain the memory of truth, the memory of God within ourselves. A guiltless, silent, right mind and a content heart, which then raises our awareness of our essential nature, the self the true self-nature which we share with God. This is the knowing I am. This is stepping in the doorway, bridge consciousness, the knowing of God's essence as our self, as our shared essence. Christ is what we've named it when we fell asleep. There was no need for a word called Son of God or Christ before we fell asleep. These are concepts that take us out of concept. These are words that take us out of words. And this means that we understand that I and my Father are one, what Jesus taught us. At one minute, there's only one dreamer. There's no characters in the dream world. There's no Jesus in the right mind. Jesus is a memory in our wrong mind of how we act right-minded and how we transcend dream into absolute reality. And then what? What do you then do? You chop wood, you fetch water, feed the kittens, and you remain aware of being aware. You're not in a hurry to get out of this world because while you're still here, you've got work to do. And what's that work? Continuous forgiveness. Listen to Dr. Liu Hen um, of Ho'oponopono, continuously doing forgiveness, continuously, continuously. Even though there's nothing triggering you anymore, you just keep bringing light, keep bringing forgiveness. Be vigilant. Be vigilant for the voice of God. Act when you're called to. Share of yourself. Lend a helping hand. Be of service. How can you truly be helpful? Not, oh, I want to get out of here. There's no way to get out. It's your mind. You can't leave the dreaming mind. You can't, you know, wake up in the morning and characters are standing outside your bed, ones you dreamt of last night. You awaken. All characters dissolve. The light has come. Realize the dream is over. Stop fighting it. Stop going into your motions. Stop saying that it's so difficult. Why is it difficult? Because you're giving attention to thoughts, emotions, sensations, and feelings. Past guilt, worrying about dying, giving attention to an old body that is designed to croak, that is designed to hurt, that is designed to pull you into it so that you can focus on it. Look, the, Watch the pain. Take a painkiller if you need to. Transcend it. There's no such thing as it's not good to take a painkiller. It's not spiritual to take a painkiller. Take it if you need it. Don't put more obstacles in your way. Find a way to be silent. Find a way to be peaceful. Stop trying to hang on to physical life. Know you are life. Transcend it. Do not be afraid of death. Go and sit in a quiet corner and imagine yourself dying. Imagine letting it all go. Make peace with death because life is all there is. Death isn't real. The reason for, it, for incarnation is undoing the separation. The problem is ignorance and suffering. The solution is knowledge. The method is a course of miracles, non-duality. 
The problem is an unfocused mind. The solution is a focused mindfulness. Be vigilant. Be silent. Practice meditation. Prayer. What is prayer? Abidance. Gratitude. It's just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. The problem is fear, vengeance, guilt, judgment, attack. The solution is understanding the truth. What's the method? Forgiveness. Devotion. Time to God. Tithing. Gratitude and service. The result? Right-mindedness. The end of the idea of fear, sin, and guilt. The recognition of our true shared self. The recognition I am. The essential nature of God's nature. Pure love. Pure peace. Pure joy. What else you want to know? What else could you possibly want to know? It's all you, Holy Son of God. Stop dreaming. What else do you want to do? Stop dreaming of fantastical futures, of better ways to do illusion. Know that nothing is outside you. The world, the universe, all people are in your mind. Be still as often as you can. Become present in the all-pervading presence of the self and the Christ and God. Rest in yourself. Rest. Abide. Go within. Go within. Recognize your heart, Christ, the temple, the kingdom of heaven, where God abides because you abide in God and God abides in you. Know that the essence of yourself is attached to nothing, yet it's connected to all of it. Know that your essential nature is made from the self-same essence energy as God, silent, benevolent peace, ever-extending joy. Holy Spirit is joy, pure joy, inspiration, pure joy. And it's made from the omnificence of our creator, created from the omnificence of our creator, God. Now pour this into all your creations. What's your creations? The whole universe is your creation. You're making. Now pour it in to your, in your closest surroundings, expand it into your family circle, and expand it into your community, expand it into what appears to be your country, expand it, share yourself with the world and do it for free and give up your day job. Unless you really are called to teach, in which case you would have been teaching right from the beginning. Learn to forgive. Meditate regularly so that you can practice mindfulness. Commit to knowledge. Commit to understanding. Read daily so that you can be and understand thyself knowingly. Spend time in fellowship and prayer. Go and visit the sick. Go and help those who need help. Give devotion. Spend your time in tithing. Time of money. Of course, you give money to charities, especially those that need it, if you can. But charity starts at home. Give community service. This is my part. I'm sharing my way with you. You can pause and watch this at your own time. It's just a recommendation. It's my part. Follow me, don't follow me. I hope I'm reinforcing this for you because you're agreeing or I'm reinforcing this for you because you're disagreeing and you have your own part. Whenever you go into the world, whenever you're reading something, you're hearing something, if you disagree, push it away. If you have nothing nice to say, be quiet, holy son of God. So at least you're not putting negativity out in the world, but sharing the light you are permanently, constantly, continuously. Be yourself knowing. Blessings. Stop sharing now. And um, I'll open up for some questions.